preparing to live stream, but for our buddies just joining, let us know where y'all are tuning in from in the chat and what role do you play in tech? Are you a designer? I see a lot of designers. I see a lot of product managers and engineers, but let us know in the chat. Awesome, we are live. Welcome everyone. We have a lot of buddies signed up today. Um, we have an exciting event about design and engineering collaboration specifically focused on the handoff process with our buddies at Zeppelin. And working with engineers is a really big part of daily life as a UX designer. And I'll quickly kick us off with a couple of slides about design buddies. So I'm Grace, I'm the founder of Design Buddies full-time. I'm a product designer at a large tech company. And I found Design Buddies as a student for fun. And here we are today with 40, 42,000 members on Discord. And Design Buddies is a community where you level up your design career. So we provide a lot of resources, like events like this, all for free, for y'all to connect with each other and level up together. Um, and quickly, and feel free to connect with us on any of my social media platforms. And I'm here joining us today. We have V, Brenda, and Jack from our team as well, helping us moderate our lovely chat here. And for house rules, um, events are recorded. And if you don't want to be in a recording, you can join us. You're also live streaming on YouTube as well. And feel free to engage in the chat if anything Mike says resonates or vibes with y'all or anything any of our buddies says and vibes with y'all. Uh, feel free to just like bounce off each other in the chat. Um, it's fun, fun little, fun, fun large community. So just here to have a good time. We also have a networking sheet, so please keep all your promotional links in there. At the end, we will have time where you can share your plug, all the links you want, but that's towards the end because we, will, we just want to encourage y'all to connect with each other too. We will not have a slide over Q&A, but we will take group selfies towards the end as well, so make sure to stay um, towards the end if you want to be in that. And we have some Zoom backgrounds. Feel free to share any takeaways on social media, tag Design Buddies, tag Zeppelin. We always reshare stuff to our Instagram stories and retweet connect with, with each other, hop into our Discord. Zeppelin also has a Discord. So join both Discords, have fun, be respectful, and vibe. I say vibe a lot. That's my favorite word. I hate words. And with that, I'll hand it over to Mike. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, thank you, Grace. Um, yeah, we've been following uh, Design Buddies for, for quite some time, actually, and we're pretty excited to uh, to be here, to be a part of it, and to share some insights that, that we've learned across uh, lots of teams and lots of people. Uh, so yeah, uh, my name is Mike. Uh, I am from Zeppelin and I work on the community team at Zeppelin. And basically what I do on the community team is uh, I talk to not only prospective users of Zeppelin, but also current users too. And I find uh, kind of interesting, unique stories and then I share them with uh, uh, our community and also the broader uh, design community. So just to start, I kind of wanted to get an idea of everybody's experience with Zeppelin. So if you've heard of Zeppelin or if you've used Zeppelin, could you just let me know in the chat uh, what your experience is like uh, with, with Zeppelin? Or if you've heard of it, what have, uh, what have you heard? So it sounds like uh, Chelsea's heard of it. Yeah, Justin, Joseph. Okay, heard, never used. A lot of, lot of heard. Used a couple times. <laughs> a lot of heard. So people have just heard the word Zeppelin thrown around a bunch of times. Okay, that's somewhere. Heard and used once. Led Zeppelin only. Oh, that's a great band. Their, their music is fantastic. Great. Uh, yeah, so for those of you who don't know... Uh, have maybe heard of it or have a general idea of what Zeppelin is. Uh, Zeppelin is a platform to work with not only your uh, developers, but also other people on your team, like PMs and marketers as a designer. And actually, uh, Zeppelin was founded about seven years ago. And initially, uh, Zeppelin was just for technical specifications, uh, assets, uh, and largely components. So I can actually show you uh, what I'm talking about here. So when I talk about uh, specs, it's just the distance between you know, different layers. I'm sure a lot of us are familiar with that. Uh, assets, just these downloadable assets in different formats for different platforms. And then things like components too. 
And uh, our founders were actually working at an agency in Turkey. And it was a design and development agency. And one was a designer and one was a developer. But they were having uh, these problems communicating with one another. One another. Uh, they weren't talking the same language and they weren't sharing the right information between them that they needed to build those products quickly and efficiently. And that's how Zeppelin uh, came about. And so if you've heard of Zeppelin, but maybe not used it, you might think uh, Zeppelin is for these technical specs, uh, these assets that I showed you, and then things like components too. But the truth is, uh, over the past seven years, uh, Design Handoff has evolved uh, quite a bit. And it's not so much just those pieces that we need today, but it's the other parts of design that are so important. So uh, it's kind of the why behind your designs. So for example, uh, what does the transition between these two screens look like? Uh, what does the user flow look like? So how does your user move through, uh, say, an authentication flow in your application? Or how do they check out? Those questions uh, aren't really solved by those specs and assets that uh, we used to get that are kind of the foundational pieces of handoff. So it's just to say that uh, today, a design handoff is a lot more than what you might associate with with handoff, which is mostly specs, assets, and this components piece. So yeah, uh, that's where we are today. Uh, I think it always surprises a lot of people when I say that uh, the vast majority of Zeppelin signups uh, nowadays are Figma users. Uh, it wasn't in the past, but now it's mostly Figma users. And just a month or uh, two months ago, we passed uh, 5 million users uh, total. So uh, Zeppelin, Zeppelin is big. <laughs> Zeppelin is pretty big. Cool. Does anybody have any questions about uh, the history of uh, Zeppelin or what we do or anything like that? You can just post it in the chat. Um, we're not really competing with Atlassian, no. <laughs> Uh, they're, they're a partner of ours. We have some integrations with Atlassian products like Jira. I'll show that later. Uh, so is Zeppelin for apps or web two? Uh, yeah. So Zeppelin works for iOS. It works for Android and for web, uh, applications too, um, or websites. Um, yeah, anything that uh, you're kind of building, Zeppelin can can help you. And Zeppelin is free. We do have a free tier. So um, after the talk is over, maybe we can send a link. And if you're interested, you can go ahead and sign up and, and check it out. Okay, I'll keep moving for now. Uh, we got a lot to cover. <laughs> uh, but I'll try to get to, to more questions later. Okay, so uh, yeah, today I wanna overview some of the aspects of handoff that aren't just specs, assets, and those foundational pieces that I talked about. A lot of design tools today offer those. So tools like Figma, XD, or Sketch, or even third-party integrations will offer those services. Um, those are really table stakes for handoff. And uh, to get to the next level, you need these kind of uh, other pieces that, that I'll talk about today. So the first theme uh, is just organization uh, in your design tool. And uh, does, this, does this canvas look uh, kind of familiar to anyone? Does anybody uh, organize their canvas like this where you have you know, maybe screens laid out in the happy path, uh, you have a, a name and a description of these particular screens, you have these uh, dividing bars that are organizing your canvas. Yes, yes, Serena says yes, William says yes, Chelsea, yes, uh, Grace, yes. <laughs> Grace is, uh, is the, inside, the inside woman. 
Yeah, so uh, this is a common way to uh, to lay out uh, designs today, right? So uh, one of the things from an organizational perspective that is missing in our design tool today and something that I hear uh, personally a lot is that the process uh, from designing a screen to actually getting it developed, it takes a lot more tools than just Figma or Adobe XD or Sketch. So for example, uh, you might have a Notion doc or a PRD, a product uh, resource documentation, where you're overviewing why you're building a particular feature, who it's for, what are the objectives of this feature? It's basically documenting the entire process before it begins, right? Before you wireframe, before you create your high fidelity mockups. You also might have a tool like Jira, where you're doing your work item tracking, or maybe you're using Trello or Monday.com. And this might be where you're breaking up all the issues and making sure that your team is on track for these different pieces of the application. Finally, you might have a development resource uh, or repo like GitHub or Storybook where you're storing uh, your front end components. Is this sounding, is this sounding familiar to anybody? Is anybody using uh, these tools currently? Storybook, fantastic. So many of them. Trello, yes. So the issue becomes that you have all these different tools that you use, but you don't have one place to put those tools. So if I'm a new dev or I'm a new designer, or maybe I come on to a new project, it's difficult for me to understand the context behind what I'm building. So maybe some decisions in the PRD that were made about the design or some items that were assigned to me that I'm not aware of. Basically, all the information that exists in these tools, it's all over the place, right? And so uh, we'd heard about this and we wanted, to, we wanted to help out. And so what we did was uh, we created what are called workspace sections. And here, right here, this is uh, the UI of Zeppelin. For those of you who haven't seen it, don't be uh, too afraid just yet. It's, it's fairly, uh, it's fairly simple and uh, straightforward. Just like a lot of design tools, we have uh, projects or what you might uh, think of as files. And these contain all the screens that you're working on. And we're in a particular workspace here. So you see that this one is called uh, Snack Overflow. And it's giving me some, some information about, uh, about this workspace here. But so what were all these resources and all these different places? You know, we didn't know where they were. We couldn't find them. We didn't have that context. All you have to do in Zeppelin is add these links. So you can have all your requirements from Notion or a Confluence. You can have all of your work items from Jira, Trello, Monday.com, uh, your wireframes, your higher fidelity mockups from Figma and then your development resources too, like Serena was talking about, like Storybook. <laughs> and basically it's this way to uh, give the information to your team, give them that context of all the things that surround the design besides just the screens, right? Cool. Okay, so uh, that's workspace sections. I know it's simple, uh, but it's powerful too, right? An easy way to organize uh, your projects and your resources into one place. Does anybody have any questions about uh, workspace sections? I'll show you how to add one actually. We just click this add link. We can add the name and then paste the URL here too. And depending on, um, where it's coming from, we'll parse the URL and we'll figure out the, the type of tool it is. And then we'll uh, add a nice little icon. <laughs> cool. Sweet. So that's the first piece of organization, uh, how you can up-level uh, the organization of you and your team. 
The second piece that I want to talk about is uh, the name of these sections and the uh, breakup of them that I was talking about earlier. So a lot of people mentioned that uh, this is a way that they're organizing their screens today. You organize them in a happy path. Uh, you have a section name and a description. You're breaking them up with these dividers. Maybe you're using different pages or different files for uh, separate features or different flows in the application. There's a lot of different ways to do it. But the point is, uh, sometimes as designers, you know, uh, we don't have one standardized way of organizing our canvas. And I actually think that's a part of the beauty uh, of design, right? Is uh, there's kind of this creativity aspect and uh, sometimes structure uh, gives way to creativity. And our, our, our file gets a little bit messy, but there's beauty in that, right? It allows us to be creative. But the problem becomes that uh, if someone besides you comes into your file, say a dev or a PM, they might not understand how it's set up. So you might look at this file and you're like, oh, dang, that's, uh, that's pretty nice right there. That's well organized. And the truth is, is that this is probably the best it gets, right? I mean, this is like, you know, this is a very nicely organized file, but there's a whole distribution of files that uh, look a little, a little less organized than, than this one here. So how do we make sure that uh, we're delivering our screens to our developers, to other members on our team in a structured way that they can understand, right? And one of the ways that we can do that uh, is with a feature in Zeppelin called sections. So before I do that, I just want to show how you move screens from a design tool uh, into Zeppelin. And all you do is drag and select uh, you can right click. And Zeppelin is a plugin. So for Adobe XD, for Sketch, and for Figma, uh, you download the Zeppelin plugin. We'll get a pop up here uh, for Figma. We can click export. And here we can choose the, uh, the project that we want to, to publish to. And we just click export, and then we can get those screens into Zeppelin there. Cool. So let's see what that looks like. Here's our screens already preloaded in here. And to organize them in Zeppelin, all I have to do is drag, select them, create a new section, name it, and I can add a little bit of a description too. So maybe this is where users buy and sell food. And boom, we're done. The beauty becomes of sections that if you have lots of screens, it's easy for me to navigate between these different sections. You can even share links to a specific section. So maybe I'm working on only these six screens. I can share a link and instantly be navigated to this piece. I don't have that wall of screens that I was looking at uh, in my canvas. And it's a structured uh, way that that I can share with the rest of the team that, that they'll understand. Okay. I wanna show just a more complex use case really quickly. So here we have uh, all these sections here and we have tons and tons of screens. I can actually expand all these and we can see that. Uh, there's a plethora of screens in this, uh, in this project here. So the more screens, uh, kind of the more value that sections can, can bring for you there. Uh, does anybody have any, any questions about that? Can you create sections within sections? So I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say this, but uh, <laughs> we're actually working on that right now. Uh, yeah, I think it's getting close to the development phase. And we should have a section within sections feature uh, in the coming months. Uh, you guys know that in uh, the product in product development, you never want to give a, a particular date because there's always things that come up that you might not see. But I think I'm pretty confident in a couple months we'll have that uh, we'll have that come out. Yeah, I'm, I'm Jack. I'm giving away spoilers. I'm not even sure I'm supposed to be giving away. So <laughs> little sneak peek there.
Okay, great. Yeah. So uh, Ryan, I will actually be showing how to link to Jira in just a bit. Okay, great. So that's sections, uh, a way to organize your, uh, your workflow. The next thing I want to talk about uh, that we've heard is uh, about screen states. And so uh, screen states, if you're not familiar, uh, basically you have uh, a single screen and it'll have different behavior depending on what the user is doing. So here we have a, a search page and this is a default page. Uh, from there, when we type in suite, we're getting some results and you can see that the UI is changing here. If we have no results, we have this special page that is notifying the user hey, look, we didn't find anything, maybe try searching something else, check your spelling, et cetera, et cetera. And what's interesting about this is that in design, these screens are three separate screens, right? But in development, these are actually one screen and they might just have different properties. So the difficulty becomes uh, as designers, how do we communicate to our team that these screens in our design tool are actually one in development. And not only that, but how do we reduce clutter in our canvas to just clean it up, make it look prettier, and have that organization, that nice place where other people can come and feel comfortable? Well, uh, one way we can do that, if we hop back into our project we were checking out earlier, and we see these screens here that we were looking at before, if I just select these, and I drag them, I can drop them, boom, there we go. Those three screens become one. And this little icon here at the bottom is notifying me that now we've created a screen variant. When I hop into this screen, I can see that at the top, we have our default, no results, and results page. We can toggle between the three and see the differences. And I'm actually just gonna reorder this because I think it's supposed to be this way. So there we go. What were those three screens in our design tool? Maybe uh, cluttering our canvas a little bit, uh, you know, confusing uh, other members of the team. It's just one simple one in Zip one now, and you can toggle between the three to see what properties you might need to build. Yes, Jess, now they will know. <laughs> they will know, Jess, I promise. Cool. Uh, that's screen variance. I'm going to keep chugging here uh, just so I make sure that we get through everything and we can hopefully uh, leave some time for, for questions too. So, uh, William, is that on the designer to go into Zeppelin and organize or communication with the dev, uh, dev? I think it depends on how your team is working. Usually I would say it's a designer. If you're creating these screens right, you would know, hey, these are uh, these are three screens that are actually the same one. These are screen states. When you publish them to Zeppelin, you would drag and drop them into one screen. And that's how you can communicate uh, to your team that, hey, this is actually uh, one screen in development. This is a, this is a screen state. Cool. All righty. So that was one of the big themes that I wanted to talk about beyond uh, those specs, those assets, those components was organization. And today what I'm showing is just a couple of features of Zeppelin. Uh, this is by no means, you know, uh, everything that we do. There's, you know, there's, there's a host of other things that, uh, that we get into as well. Uh, the next thing, uh, that I want to show and that I alluded to earlier uh, was using Jira uh, in, your, in your workflow. Uh, so Jira is a great way to kind of operationalize your design to development workflow. Uh, you can break up building an application or a feature into these little tiny bite-sized pieces uh, called issues, and then you can assign those to different people. So it improves your efficiency, uh, visibility into work, and uh, keeps everybody on the same page as far as what they're doing. 
The problem that uh, we see today uh, is that that organization that we've established uh, and that pipeline that we've established in JIRA, it doesn't exist in our design tool, right? So we have all these screens, but there's no way for me to know, hey, who's working on this particular dashboard screen or this uh, market one or this create uh, screen? And basically uh, today in design tools, there's this one-way connection with Jira where if you wanna have that organization, uh, you can add these screens into a ticket, but when you're in the design tool itself, looking at the actual screens, inspecting them, you don't have that, that information, it's gone. Um, so uh, one way to fix that is with an integration uh, with Zeppelin, with Jira. And uh, someone was alluding to this, to this earlier. But basically, uh, we bring in all the issues that are attached to either the sections I mentioned, uh, screens or projects. You can filter based on the particular issue. So maybe as a dev, uh, I know that I'm working on only the six screens and only this ticket. I can filter and just quickly work on these. When you're looking at a particular screen, you can see what issues this is attached to. And you can even navigate to them too. Preview them. And if you really wanted, you can hop right back into that screen. So that's a JIRA integration. Uh, it's a quick overview. I assume a lot of you are familiar with either uh, JIRA, Trello, and the other tools out there. So I wanted to make it just short and sweet. Okay, so Sarah, uh, does Zeppelin communicate to devs in REM? Uh, there is actually an option in Zeppelin to have your spacing uh, show up as REM units. For those of you who don't know, uh, REM is basically a way to describe the uh, uh, different uh, spacing uh, in your design, and you set a base value, and then everything else is a multiple based on, on that value. And Zeppelin does support that, yes, yeah, Sarah. Okay, cool. Let's see what time we got. Oh, we got plenty of time. <laughs> okay, does anybody have any questions about the organizational uh, pieces of Zeppelin? Anything I mentioned, uh, or just want to, you know, I don't know, say anything at all in the chat, you know, uh, anything, uh, anything on your mind? Uh, yeah, let me, um, let me know. Or if you have, if you have questions about, about what's been overviewed so far, happy to, uh, happy to answer them. Nothing, huh? There's gotta be something. Okay, Lisa, how do devs want designers to organize their designs? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, usually we see uh, people organizing them, uh, I mean, in, in a way that is, I was going to say the happy path, but I think just a way that is most consumable to, uh, to developers. And I think some of the pieces that I overviewed um, talk about that. So when they come into a file with screens, they want to know exactly what they're working on, one. So when you come to this canvas here and you see it's like, bam, whoa, okay, what the heck is going on here? I don't really know, right? So understanding exactly what they're working on, I think, is the first piece. And you can do that uh, in a couple different ways, right? So uh, we talked about sections as a way to kind of break up this, this wall of screens and notify uh, your developers as to exactly what they're, they're working on. Uh, there's some other hacks too. Um, like I mentioned, screen states. Um, you know, there's ways to talk about uh, the different animations or micro animations that you might have uh, on a particular screen. That type of information will be uh, important when when a developer is looking at a screen. But I think the way that you want to organize it is just a way that is easily consu uh, consumable for them and uh, breaking up you know, this canvas, which might be intuitive for you, but isn't for a developer, 
uh, can take you a long way to getting uh, to getting you to getting you there. Okay. Great. So that's organization. Uh, I just want to show a quick sneak peek of uh, something that we just came out with. Uh, before I do, I'll just I'll overview uh, something something else here. Okay, so that was organization. I want to talk about user flows. And is everybody here pretty familiar with user flows? Uh, it's basically a way to document how that user is moving through your application. So I talked about the authentication flow before, but it could be anything in your app, any uh, way that a user is navigating through your application. You can document it with, with a user flow. Yep. Yep, Serena says they're super important. William, yes. Daphne, yep. Cool. Okay, so people are familiar with user flows. That's fantastic. So uh, user flows are created a couple ways. You know, sometimes they're created in like a Fig Jam or a Miro. Other times they're created in, uh, you know, Figma or other design tools like XD or Sketch. And basically what we were hearing uh, was that it was a little manual to, uh, to create these user flows. So this is probably the most manual way to do it right here. But uh, you'd use, say, the pen tool. You'd create this uh, arrow, and then you'd... Um, you'd move it from this screen to, to this screen here. The problem is that, you know, say this, uh, this screen right here moves to a different place, uh, the arrow is, is immediately broken, right? Um, or to uh, group these entire screens, you need to create these custom layers uh, in the background. If you add a screen, you know, you have to, okay, now I got to resize uh, my, my group there. Basically, when you're managing these flows, it becomes very time consuming, not only to create them, but to update them as screens change, as they move, as you add new screens, right? And uh, basically, we had heard that a problem, that was a problem. And uh, so we uh, had a beta, we collected some feedback, and we created what are called flows in Zeppelin. Uh, so before we've been in this dashboard view at the top here, that's where you'll see all of your screens, uh, but we're gonna move into the uh, flows tab. And basically to uh, add screens into a flow, I can drag and select them, add to flow, or I can click this handy little uh, shortcut right there. And boom, there we go. Oh, whoops. I just deleted all the screens. I'm gonna remove this one from the flow here. So we've got some screens here. Actually, we need to add a few more. Let's do this. There we go. Okay. All right. So we've added our screens to flows. The first thing to notice here is that uh, the way that these screens came into uh, Zeppelin is the same way that they uh, are oriented in your design tool. Uh, so we can go back uh, into Figma, and we can see these are the, the screens here that we added. And they're actually in the same orientation here. So when you add flows or when you add screens into flows, uh, they'll have the same orientation that you had them in your design tool. So if you're uh, organizing them via the happy path, there's no need to do any uh, more extra work when you're adding them. Not only that, but we have this grid that these screens snap to. And you might notice that uh, it's quite big, uh, that we don't have the kind of same fine tuning that you can have in a design tool. And the reason we did that was, uh, you know, when you're creating a flow, you just think things to either match the top or the bottom and not necessarily be like micrometers. Uh, um, within each other. So just that, that nice way to, to easily line them up. Well, when, you, when I was hovering over the screen, you might have noticed that these blue points are popping up uh, and they pop up here, but they also pop up on um, all the side of the screen. And this is how I'm going to create my connector. So I can just go ahead, drag and drop, and boom, there I go. I have my connector instantly created. 
And not only that, but it automatically is snapping to the side of that screen. Now I can create them uh, from the side or I can create them from individual layers too. So this baklava layer is going to this delicious baklava on the right here. But what about if I wanna communicate, say a no results, an error state, uh, or anything else? How would I do that? Well, you can create a connector. You can change the color, maybe red for error, yellow for no results. You can change it to a dash line, and you can even document it too. I can uh, add floating labels here too. So maybe there's something specific that uh, happens on this screen, like the uh, hand waves when you click it. I can document that. And boom, there we go. I have my nice little flow right there. To organize it, I can create a group and visually quickly see what a flow is made of. So if it's made of uh, different subflows here. And I can even share a link to this particular group too. So what was a manual way of creating these text layers, uh, these layers behind to uh, group them, uh, you know, connectors breaking when I move them. When we go to Zeppelin, I move a screen, the connectors don't break. I can move an entire group. I can add screens and the group will resize. All that extra work that I was doing before, uh, I no longer have to worry about uh, in flows here. Cool. Yes, L, autoflow, very popular in Figma, actually. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, and I just wanna show you what a more complex flow might look like. Uh, so here we have one that's a little more built out and you can see that I have multiple subflows with these groups. Uh, if I zoom in, you can see here that I also have some shapes um, that are included in this flow. So I have my uh, label that I was adding earlier, but we also have rectangles. Uh, we have um, pills and then we have diamonds too. So say you have some kind of conditional statement, uh, you can use diamonds for that. Rectangles for something that might be happening uh, outside the application and then pills for the start or the end uh, of a flow. And these shapes are fully customizable. Okay, so that's flows. Uh, so Nadine, Nadine asks, what's the difference between Zeppelin and Overflow? Yeah, it's an interesting question, uh, Nadine. I think Overflow is uh, a pretty great tool. I think one of the differences, um, at least how I've heard that some of our users that use Flow talk about it, is that you have the Flow um here exactly where developers are also building the screens right so uh that context that we we're talking about def uh, before that you need for development if your tools are scattered and disparate and all over the place then that context gets lost so here i have all the screens i basically have everything i need to go and uh, build and develop these screens not only the screens and all the technical uh, specifications, but also the user journeys too. So it's all just in one place. I don't have to go searching around. Cool. All right. Uh, we just have a couple minutes uh, left here. That was all I wanted to show. Uh, there's a lot more in Zeppelin. Hopefully, uh, some of the issues that I've talked about today, uh, you know, resonated with uh, with you as far as organization uh, and also creating flows. Some things that are beyond just providing those tech specs or the assets uh, or components to your developers. Uh, by no means is Zeppelin the only way to do it. Uh, there's lots of different ways. 
Um, so anything that works for you and your team is definitely the way to go. Uh, yeah, if you have more questions, uh, like Grace mentioned, uh, you can hop on the Discord. I'll be on there for the next half hour, hour or so, uh, to help to help answer any any questions that that you might have that we didn't get to. Um, okay. Yeah. I think maybe uh, that that might be it. Yeah. Thank you so much. We'll have our group photo now. So for our buddies. This is our little design or big design buddy. Oh, yeah, I have a question if I could ask. I apologize for the interruption. Oh, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, great presentation, Michael. Uh, is there a chance we could, um, the file, the Figma file that you have opened and shared with us, is that something that we can look into? Is it shareable? Uh, you know, I could potentially duplicate it and give it to you, uh, Olga. If you want to, um, or just, it's on Discord, um, like if their link is on Discord or something. Yeah, if you if you want to join the Discord, just message me, then I can I can shoot that over to you. Is the Discord available in the invite? I think Grace put it in the chat. Oh, yeah, Jack just dropped it again. So make sure to drop it. Um, yeah, uh, after this event, we can also share with y'all via email all the links as well with what 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 with what you registered for on Luma. Let's do a group photo. Um, I'll count down five seconds, turn on your cameras if you wish. And yeah, feel free to definitely connect with Design Buddies. We also have a Discord community if you want more resources and design handoff process or anything, feel free to do so. We'll do a static photo first and then a wave for our Instagram story. So something like to spice things up. And since we're at the end, um, Something that we've been incorporating in our events is opportunities for all of you to connect. We do have a networking sheet that was shared earlier, but um, since we're not collecting questions anymore, drop all your links in the chat, plug away, connect with each other, send each other personalized invites saying that, LinkedIn invite saying that y'all met at this event and shamelessly plug away. And let's <laughs> connect. <laughs> I just like how we look back. Yeah, cool. We're going to do static photo first and then a way for our Instagram story. All right. Um, feel free to like, oh, I don't have my fluffle with me. Oh, well, it's okay. Oh, I have fluffle right here. Feel free to grab any objects you want, if you want. Um, all right. Five, four, three, two, one. Smile. Cool. And then we'll do a way for our Instagram story. Make sure you drop all y'all's links in the chat. Feel free to connect with me, Michael, um, everyone as well. All right. Ready? You can like wave, dance, dab. This is for Instagram story. If you want to be at design.buddies, when you see yourself on TV. <laughs> Ready, set, wave. Hello, buddies. We just finished an awesome event about the handout process with Michael from Zeppelin. Thank you to all our buddies for coming today. Make sure to check out the recording on our wholesome YouTube channel. Cool, this is gonna be on our Instagram story. And with that, make sure to keep plugging away. I see a lot of LinkedIn links. Feel free to save the chat, connect with each other, send each other personalized invites saying y'all met at this event and then have find stuff in common, chat with each other. We just want our buddies to level up together as well. And yeah, is there anything else that I missed? No, I think that's it. Uh, good chatting with everyone. Good, good seeing everybody. Um, yeah, this is fun. <laughs>